The background is very good. The okay, we are live now. Yes. Okay. Hello. Sunday Adelaide here, everybody. Sunday Adelaide here. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Uh, I want to welcome all of you to our broadcast today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And um, what we are going to be talking about today is the normal suspect, suspect, suspect that we always talk about with uh, Evangelist Bisola, which is, uh, or who is uh, uh, T.B. Joshua. Uh, you know, people will wonder, why are you paying so much attention to this T.B. Joshua? Well, because it is, uh, he has brought destruction to the Nigerian church. He has brought a lot of uh, um, humiliation to people's lives. And he had really destroyed a lot of, a lot of lives and a lot of, he has destroyed the reputation of the Nigerian church. And even though a lot of people think that, he, you know, he's, he's a real man of God and they have been deceived by him, but really, this man is not representing the Lord Jesus Christ and is dis destroying lives. And many families, in fact, today I got a photograph. Somebody wrote me a letter that the father died in T.B. Joshua's place, you know, because of the deception not to use drugs that he has, he has healed them and then they will go and they will die. So a lot of death. And But these ones we are going to be talking about, it's not just the death because they, the, you know, they visited there. We are going to be talking about people who are there, who are dying in the place. I mean, not even the destruction only. We are talking about staff and members who are living with him and dying. And some people believe that he's using them as a ritual. I don't know about that. But the fact that he's leading to death, he's destroying people's lives, not just physically, but even destinies have been destroyed. So that's why we have to keep on talking about this TV Joshua until our, the eyes of our people open. So let us introduce uh, today uh, my guest, who is my usual guest, Evangelist uh, Efseba uh, Bisola Johnson. Bisola. Hello. Thank you. Hi, dear sir. How, How are, are you? you? I'm fine. How are you doing today? Happy New Year to you. You to you too. Happy New Year. How is uh, the New Year meeting you in Nigeria? You look great. I like your white attire and your new hairstyle. Thank you very much. Welcome to the program today. Thank you. Thank you, and sir. Thank you for giving us the opportunity on your platform. And today's program is about how TB Joshua destroys lives. Mm. Will you affirm that? Because from your book, when I read your book, I read over maybe 40 or 50 names of people that died mysteriously after they came in contact with T.B. Joshua. Will you affirm that that is true? And, and uh, uh, apart from affirming that, those are the ones that are known to me. There are some that are not known to me. Even before we got into the program, somebody was telling me how many Zambians died there. So, but because I've got, got into the program, I cannot reach the person back. So, I'm wishing the people at home Happy New Year. All our viewers, Happy New Year to you. And Thank I'm you. encouraging everyone to have at least a challenge in this year, 2019. You saw DSA challenge, Elijah challenge. You saw his Christmas challenge, which also challenged me. And I, I, I accepted DSA challenge. And me too, I have a lot of challenge this year. One of them is not to be silent over what is going on in falsehood churches, not only in the synagogue. There are many of them. The culture of silence and secrecy in Africa must be broken. I'm telling you, DSA, our Lord Jesus Christ was never silent over the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He kept talking, you know, about them. He kept chastising them and helping people to have their mind 
to be open. You understand? So that is one of my challenge this year. I'm taking it as a passion. I'm taking it as a call. Whatever anybody has to say. Some people are playing with rhetorics of judge not. Who says judge not? The Bible says the righteous can judge righteously. Isn't it, Pastor? Yep. Yes, we can judge righteously. And unfortunately, many of these people that talk is because it has not affect, affected them personally. If it has affected them personally, they will know and understand what we are talking about. They will know how some people are still on their knees today, praying for those people they don't know from Adam to be set free from incarceration. I mean, God never wants us to be in bondage. If God created Adam and Eve and gave them free will, who are you to put anybody under bondage just because you want to gather them under you? I mean, it is unacceptable, DSA. It is unacceptable. And until our, our people's eyes of understanding open. In my profile today, I said another challenge of mine is that no matter how anyone constitutes nuisance on my, on my updates, I will not block the person. Because the Bible says he has set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So if I block everybody at my good time, who are going to see me? It's all these people, both friends and foes. So let them continue saying whatever. In as much as I stand upon the truth, I'm not shaking, sir. I'm not shaking. I'm not shaking. Well, I support what that. We your... saying, I suppose... What we are saying again is that Anytime our people go to the gathering of saints, I don't want to use the word church because it has been bastardized. Anybody, anytime anyone goes to the gathering of saints, they should not leave their brains at home. They should not leave their brains, yeah, at the gates. They should go in with their brains. They should put on their thinking cap, as uh, Paul, I think by Lumi usually say. You understand? So they should, they should weigh things. Jesus Christ was, was questioned. They questioned him. If the, the people there, they questioned him. What can you say about this? Why should the, our geo become semi-demigod? Why should they be living larger than life? And they don't want anybody to question them. We are brethren, if we are. We should be able to talk to each other. That is why we, we are on, you know, we, we are on DSA platform. It's reachable, it's touchable. It, it listen, you know, to, to what you have to say. Even if he has his own personal opinion, he will listen to you. But you, you can't reach any of our people like that. They are too big. They are, they, are, they, are, they are up there. They are sitting up there. I don't know. I don't know where they are sitting. So we want our people to get wisdom because your, your, your captors, your, your, the strength of your captor lies in your weakness. It's because you are weak. That is why your captor are strong. Your manipulators are using your, your ignorance against you. But if you get wisdom, as the Bible says, get wisdom, get understanding. And when you get it, you, you will test every spirit. There's one, one, one person that I just heard that he has become a pastor. So I called this person. I said, did God call you? I mean, that's, I'm just asking. He said, yeah, God called him. I asked him one or two things from the scriptures. This person couldn't answer. I said, what are you teaching your, 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 your members? He said, uh, if he lay hands on people, they fall. I said, after fall, what happened? He said, he can see, he can give prophecies. I said, even witches and wizards, they can see. So, if, if you are just seeing, 
you are not teaching them the word of God. You are not connecting them with God. You are only connecting them to yourself. So each time they come to church or they come to the gathering, they come to seek you, not to seek God. And Good they point. need to seek God. They need to seek their creator. They need, they need to see it from whom they came from and from whom they return back, back to. Because on that resurrection money, you will not be there. It's only between them and their creator. So why, why you deny them access? Why you deny them access after Jesus has made the way? So you people, you are just playing religion. You are just playing church. You know, and men, there are so many today. There are so many today. Jesus came for us to know the truth. But Satan will continue to hide truth from people. He doesn't want them to know the truth. Mother Eve, I believe she will almost faint after she got different things that Satan advertised to her. What Satan advertised to her was different from what she got. And that is what is happening in our churches today. What they advertise on TV is different from what you'll be given. In the synagogue, I would, you know, after saying all this, I will tie it up to when I was naive, to when I was gullible, to when I was vulnerable. And lots of gullible, vulnerable, and naive people are in the world today. They are, they are in my shoes, the, 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 the point I was when I went to the synagogue and I fell into this, this pit of bewitchment. I was bewitched. I was initiated into the dark world until mercy found me. The mercy of God found me. Glory to so God. that's why, sir, I cannot, I will not, I will not, I will not keep quiet. I will continue to say it because I felt it. I felt it. I know what it was. I, I, I don't even wish it for my enemy. Not to talk of the people that are created in the glory, in the likeness and the image of God, for them to be to, to be debased and be degenerated de 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 to level of slavery animal, that they, they, they start using them as a guinea pig, guinea pig to try to try to try to do to try to to. I mean, it's, 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 it's terrible, sir. Our people must be liberated from, from, from this, from this, these conductors of Satan. They must be liberated. We keep talking about it. We will keep talking about it. We keep talking about it. A lot of people have died. A lot of people, they are just, they, they don't even know. They, they, they have lost their mind. They lost their mind. They have lost, they have lost bearing in life. You know, it, it, uh, this program cannot contain it if we start talking about it. It's, you know, it's, in it's the ad, terrible. In the advert, we had 14 names of people that have lost their lives in the process. That, that is just understatement, DSA. It's understatement. We just put it because of space. They are, the list is unending. The list is unending. It is in our own time that I know that people will go to place called church and they will go and die because of stampedes, because of other means. The Bible says, multitude follow Jesus Christ. They never recorded anyone died. It's, it's not in my Bible. The one that happened in the book of Acts, when Paul was preaching, the, the boy slept off. And when the boy fell from, the, from, from upstairs down, they said the boy died. And they said the apostle that was preaching went down to lay his hand on him and brought him back to life. 
Why couldn't TB Joshua bring those people he destroyed and he killed in 2014? He is a healer according to him. He heals. It, it could have been a good opportunity for him to start displaying what he could what he knows how to do best. Rather, he ran away. Because he knew what he used those people for. Brother Inkechi said, caught me a week before that time. Some men visited TB Joshua. And TB Joshua asked Nkechi to conduct them round the synagogue. He said, particularly that building that collapsed, those people, they put Shaki on their neck and they, they, they dress weird. He said that particular building, they turned around that building three times. He thought maybe they were carried away, they were just, you know, looking, they don't know what. He said until that building collapsed, he started, you know, bringing the, the angles together. People should be careful where they go to. They should be careful. You don't know the time the demons of Fatai want to drink blood. You don't know the time that the demons want to, want to lay mayhem on people. So people should be very careful. Even in this mountain, that water mountain, People died there. The workers, they died there. And they don't bring them out of water. They leave them inside the water. What and their family, their families will be looking for them till today. They are inside that water. They died. What water? In, yes. Apart from the synagogue auditorium that is in uh, a, a he, uh, he, he, is, he has another place in Egbe. They call the place Agodo. They said that is where he first, uh, he first landed. And that place is full of water. It's water. So he now dragged the water and make it like a lake. So there are some places you can, you can walk through some parts you can walk through. But 80% of the place is full of water. So he built some ramshackled huts in that place, where he called Prayer Mountain, where he normally have sex with girls, where people die. If anybody goes there, you don't put on your, your, your shoes. Sometimes they carry all disciples have been there. We stayed there throughout the night. There's no light there. In the, in the dead of the night, you will be hearing funny noises from inside the bush because there's bush that's, you know, surrounded the place. So it's like a groove. So people died there? So, by accident? Yes, you mean accidents happen, people die? Me, I don't, I don't think it's an accident. I don't think it's an accident. Because if it's an accident, the, uh, the family members of the people should be called and said, okay, there's an accident that happens here. There's one man, they call him uh, Mr. Iyang. He used to be the, the, the security, the chief security of the synagogue. And also, while uh, T.B. Joshua is living larger than life today and stay uncheckmated, is because he has used money to buy law enforcement. This Iyang I'm talking about, Mr. Iyang I'm talking about, he used to be the two IC of Ikotu police station. You can imagine, <coughs> excuse me, you can imagine if you have problem with synagogue and you now go to Ikotu police station. And that is, you, the, that is the area where he was situated, right? Yes. It's just like five minutes 
five or seven minutes walk. Okay, yeah, it is the district, district head of police. Yes. So you can imagine if you have problem with synagogue and you go to Ikotun police station to report, will you have fear hearing? Because the head of the police there is is liaising with uh, the Sina synagogue and Fatai. They are on his payroll. Hmm. Even not only in Kotun, Ebe, and other places very close there, Akonwajo, all those places, all the people who are in charge of those stations are TB Joshua's boys. He share money for them. He share money for them. So uh, every Sunday, you will see them, they will bring police into the synagogue to come and just to, you know, for their presence to be felt that they are working for him. So if anyone goes to the synagogue because they need help and synagogue cannot offer that help, they will discharge that person, meaning they will send that person home. And if the person become adamant, possibly they have come to the end of themselves and they thought maybe it's in the synagogue they could get help, then these police people will be asked. They will beat them blue-black. They will beat them blue-black. Many people can testify to it, how they are beating people up. Just for how, them to leave how, the premises, to leave the church. Yes, yes. For them to leave the premises, you but know. You are talking about the mountain. Brought... You are talking about the mountain yes. where the river is, and then you started yes, talking sir. about the man. What is the connection between the man and the people who died in the mountain? Yes, this man. Thank you, DSA, for for bringing me back. This Mr. Ian also he collapsed and died there. Ooh. And thank God. Yes. Yes. He the head of the police attack. department. Yes. Hmm. And uh, fortunately for him, there were a lot of people at, at the place at that time. So they, they could have buried him there. They could have buried him there. But he had retired from the police at this point. At that point, he has not. He was in active service. Wow. Yes, it was in act. They are doing this openly. This, this we are talking about Nigeria that is lawless, no government. You think if TB Joshua is in Europe or in South Africa or in you know America or or in overseas, do you think it will continue like this? It cannot. See in the synagogue, four sword. You know sword. Yes, yeah, sword. That I know. Yes. We're buried. We're buried at the four point, four points, four, four angles. Four corners. Four corners of that place. Sword. Even the water, these people, anyway, it's that water is for another time. So you, you can never know. But how do you know the sword were buried there? How did you I know that? In Mentenas I worked in maintenance department. Maintenance department is a department that is, is in charge of building. Okay. Yes, in the synagogue. So the top people, the Fatai, Fatai could not, cannot do all those things alone. Yes, of course. That is why me too, that is why me too, I'm coming out. I'm saying this is what I've been used to do. Somebody was telling me that Fatai wants to make a statement that if you have eaten his uh, food and eaten his whatever, you know, all this African style, that if you go out of here and you say anything against him, you have betrayed him. I said, no, I've not betrayed you. You already first and betrayed me because you never let me know what you are doing. You deceived me. 
You deceived me. I thought I was living in the house of God, not knowing that I was living in the gates of hellfire. So you deceived me. So if I leave and go out to tell people that, please be careful, don't go there. I'm justified. It's like a coven. Or what do you call it? Coven? It's, it's a, yeah, it's a coven. It's a cult. Cult. We are, you know, I told you that we were, we were systemic, um, a, a sworn allegiance to him. You are, we are vowing, swearing. Yes, allegiance to him. That is like a covenant. You had a covenant. That's what it means, dear say. When visitors come, we don't allow visitors to know the true situation in the synagogue. We lied to them. We lied to them. He asked us to lie to them. <clears throat> when the visitors saw a pole that he, he, he erected and called Allah is the only greatest uh, whatever deity. We never knew it was wrong, but when visitors came, that how can this be in the church of Jesus Christ? They took the picture. And when he got to know that they have started circulating the picture somewhere, they quickly removed the, they, they quickly removed the pole. And the next visitors that came, he called us into the office. That if any visitor come and say, is there any pole like that? Just say no. And that's what we told the visitor. But the person who refused to take TB Joshua on face value, he took the picture and he took it. He took yeah, it there to was South a Africa. there was a famous Yoruba uh, Yoruba journalist. Uh, I don't I forgot his name. Is it Benga something? Uh, no, it's not Benga. It's Kola Olawu. Kola Kola Olawu. That they said actually was he came there to expose TB Joshua, and he's one of the people that died. Tell me about that story. Yes, I will tell you. Um, it was sometime in, in the 90s. There was a woman who came to the synagogue. And when the woman came, it, the woman met uh, TB Joshua in the office. But by the time she went home, T.B. Joshua went and slept with her in the dream. And when she woke up, she was misbehaving. She was misbehaving. You understand? She was misbehaving. Then, when misbehaving she, was, she means, tried to... Mis, misbehaving means mentally uh, mental lost? Mentally ill, yes. Okay. So, the family tried to help her. And all she could do was to write something to them. What happened to her? So they came to the synagogue, but they were not attended to. They were sent away. Then afterwards, they got in contact with Kola Olawi. Who was Kola it? Olawi. Who, who was Kola Olawi? Who was it? Kola Olawi was an investigative journalist in oh, Nigeria. Okay, okay. Yes. He has he had unraveled many mysteries on this, you know, on these false churches. Yeah, investigative. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So he wrote to the synagogue and said, I have a case here. Can you please come over to come and explain? TB Joshua refused to, just in the same way. When it violated some girls and they took him to church, uh, to court, he refused to go. He thought it's he, 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 too large. So the Kola Olawuyi now took pain because he's an investigative journalist. So he now took pain. He visited synagogue on the least expected day. Okay. And he was sitting in the crowd. Without prior warning. No. Okay. Without prior warning. Okay. So it was the crowd. Yes. When it, it, when the uh, deliverance service started at that time, 
you will see, if not because uh, uh, TB Joshua is rebranding, if I show you those videos of those days, you will shed tears for humanity. Girls, women will be will be led naked. Stephen Joshua will stand on his altar, that demonic altar. He will be doing like this. Are you seeing my hand? Yes. Are you seeing what is DSA? Touching the woman. He will be doing like this. He will, he will stand on his altar. He will be doing like this. Okay. As he's doing like this, those women, those girls, they will be holding their genital. Okay. TB Joshua will be explaining that as he's doing like this, he's inserting his hand into their genitals. And the people, the girls, the women, they will be holding their genitals naked. So this was what Kalaulawi saw. And to him, it was absurd. Why should you treat? Why should you treat human being this way? And he will be saying they are demon. He will be saying they are demon possessed or something, right? Yeah? He will be saying so. Okay. He will be saying. He will be so. saying he's doing deliverance on them. He's doing deliverance for them. Okay. Or sometimes he will be using his leg to 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 demonstrate something. And say he's using his leg to insert his leg in their private parts. So those people too will be dancing around, even though at the end of the day they normally share money for them. So it's like drama group. Hmm. So when Kalawali saw this, he went to his office to write a program, and he invited the woman the hard mental problem, the husband sat beside her because she was just doing... <laughs> there are a lot of women that have attacked T.B. Joshua as, as molested uh, in the dream. They already said that he, he sleep with them, both male and female. He's a demon. T.B. Joshua is a demon, the principality. But thank God we are higher than him. Because we are seated together in Christ Jesus, far above powers, dominions, principalities, and rulers of darkness. So, Kola Allah, will you call this program? Just the way you are having a program now, you are having me. He had those people there. And after he has interviewed them, he told the whole Nigeria his own personal experience that if you will not believe these people, this is what I saw. And it's unacceptable. It's not written that way in the Bible. So because of that, T.B. Joshua sent money to where Ola Olawi was working at NTA Ibadan. He sent money, a lot of money. That's only he can, he can use. He used money, he buy all the, all the studio managers and the uh, program managers and the station managers, he said he wanted to start a program there. You can imagine. At the end of the day, they, they asked Kola Olawi to leave. Wow. Because this guy, yeah, because this guy called TV Joshua is bringing more business for them. Hmm. I was the one packaging videos. I was the one using my voice that you are hearing now to lay voiceover on those videos. Hmm. So what, when I'm talking, I'm talking about my experience. Let Fatai go to court. I will say this is my experience. As, as, as I told you, I've told you before, DSA, more people are coming. Yeah. Today, we, are so today we are supposed to have two other people come. Maybe they will still call in, actually. Maybe they will by, still call By the way, the people... I, I the, I'm not even talking about, you know, uh, people calling in. I said more disciples. Okay. Let them just go through their... Rehabilitation. Their, their rehabilitation. Yes. So those people who are saying that we, are, we want to make money, blah, blah, you don't know how we live. You don't know how we eat. We don't know how those people are, are, are being rehabilitated into the society. Yeah. Kola Olawi is 
said his own part. And the old, okay, they have sent him out of uh, NTA Ibadan. And TB Joshua was sending programs to NTA. Do you know that sometimes for a week, they will be repeating one program. He just wants to block that man. Paying them money. Paying them money. Paying them money. When they take, when Mr. Olagbaju, whenever Mr. Olagbaju take the videos there, because it's a badon, he doesn't allow we to travel. So, but if it's Silverbed that is in Lagos or AIT, we do take videos there. But it's in the badon. It's Mr. Olagbaju who usually take the video there. They normally go with money. So, um, then, uh, Kola Olawi went to another place to continue his work. I don't know what happened. Then, after some years again, he, he met, uh, he was driving on the road, and synagogue driver hit his car. So, when he saw the emblem of TV, uh, synagogue on the, on the bus, he refused to let the driver go. And they went to police station and they asked the driver to pay him some money. The driver came, went to the synagogue. I was there and told TB Joshua that he met Kola Olawi on the streets. Not three months after the man died. We had the man died. So, you know, there is another woman called Lola Falarubo. This Lola Falarubo came with her husband to the synagogue. The husband is a living witness today. He's now a pastor in Ghana, and he has moved on with his life. He and his wife got to the synagogue, and when they got there, T.B. Joshua separated two of them. He said God wants to use the woman, and the man was left alone. So after like a year, the man, he called the man also, and said God wants to use him. Instead of the man to stay in Lagos, he took the man to Ghana branch. For six years, Mr. Falarubo and Mrs. Falarubo do not uh, communicate as husband and wife. Until one day that they said, Lola should go and meet her husband without any prior arrangements, not knowing that Lola was pregnant. He was pregnant for TB Joshua because all the disciples under TB Joshua, it's TB Joshua that is having sex with them. I told you about myself. I'm supposed to be ashamed, but this is what happened to me. But God has taken away your shame. Thank you. So, and when Lola got to Ghana, I think... Uh, Mr. Falarubo suspected foul. He did not go in into his wife. And that caused a lot of trouble. And because they had this trouble like a week, and Lola was sent back to Lagos. After some months, we see that Lola's belly grow open, I mean, grow bigger. And that took Falarubo away from the synagogue. And Falarubo is, is on public domain. Go and goggle it if you think I'm lying. The defenders of the universe, those people that are defending T.B. Joshua. T.B. Joshua is not crippled. T.B. Joshua is not dumb. He can defend himself. He's man enough to defend himself. Instead of him sending people like uh, Femi Fanikayo Day, to be writing, to be writing rubbish on, 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 on internet, they should they should learn and be wiser. So, Mr. Falarubo address um, address conference that this is what happened. Press conference. Google, yes, Google TV. Our TV Joshua uh, sent me to Ghana in order to. Take over my wife is there. It's on the internet. What I'm saying is on the internet. Wow. Google it. Wow. So, but me, I'm not saying what is on the internet. 
I'm saying what I know okay. because I was there. What you witnessed? When Lola was, what I witnessed. When Lola was in Ghana, um, Falarubo man would be calling T.B. Joshua. I will be in T.B. Joshua's bedroom because sometimes if the phone ring, I have to take the phone to him. They will be arguing over the phone that Lola cannot stay in Ghana. If she's making trouble, she's making trouble. So at the end of the day, they, they send Lola back. And Lola, you know, barely. Those people who do not know the, the, the secret, they thought because uh, Lola has gone to Ghana. So the husband has pregnated her. So when the husband addressed the public uh, conference. Press, press conference, press conference. Press conference. Unfortunately, when Lola's pregnancy was eight months, the pregnancy was terminated because T.B. Joshua knew that if that child is born, it will expose him because they, they can say, let's go for DNA. So we were in the room <laughs> one day. Yeah, because we were in the room one day and suddenly we were seeing blood. <coughs> The, the, the pregnancy was aborted. And Lola was not herself for a long time. That was what took her out of the synagogue. So when she left, Mr. Falarubon realized Lola has left. So Mr. Falarubon told the whole world what happened. Before Lola could open her mouth, we heard that she had breast cancer. Hmm. And unfortunately, she did not give a life to Jesus Christ. I'm saying this publicly. Anybody that leaves synagogue should go and give their life to Jesus Christ so that Jesus Christ can fight your battle. The Bible says God has given him the name that is above all names. At the name of Jesus Christ, every knee bow. The Bible says we overcame him, Satan, by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's only the blood, it's only the name of Jesus Christ that can confront that demon, and that demon will not touch you. So if you don't give your life to Jesus Christ, you are running to, from Elta Skelter, T.B. Joshua will kill you because while you were in the synagogue, he has already sold your soul to Satan. He has already initiated you. All his members, he has initiated them. I know how he initiates them. All the disciples, he has initiated them. I know how he initiates them. So, anybody that leave, he doesn't want to give them space to turn their life to God. He just killed them. That is why you see that anybody that leaves synagogue, they die. Because he wants to deliver their soul to hell. That is why we are doing this. We are here Every time, we are spending money. Me, I'm spending money to be here. And I believe, DSA, you too, you are spending money to be on, on here. Data is going. Offices is going. You, you, you know, money go to, 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 to educate you people. Because I believe that if I don't say this, I will go to hellfire. It's as bad as that. If the, 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 the 115 South Africans who perish there, if they have had this, at least some of them will still be alive today because some will, will, will think twice before going. So as we are saying it, if anybody, if, I don't have a church to, to ask anybody to come over. I'm just saying, go back to your creator. That's what we are saying. That is what I'm saying. Go and have relationship with your creator. He created you. He said before your mother conceived you. I know you. He know you. So if he know you, you should know him. He said, return to me and I will return to you. Come, let us reason together. If your sin is as red, even this thing we are talking, if you return to the Lord, the Lord will return to him. Because the, pop, the plan of God is for all men to come to repentance and come to know his son, to come to the knowledge of truth. So that's the will of God. 
But for the fact that Jesus died for the whole world does not mean that the whole world is going to heaven. Jesus has done his part. So the Bible says, to them that believe and receive him, he gives them power to become sons of God. But if you don't believe him, if you don't receive him, I'm sorry, there's another woman, Mrs. Uh, a a Bendeli. As I'm saying it, those people that know all these people, they know, their families know, you know, some old disciples know. Ebendeli was one of the, uh, they call them good women. T.B. Joshua used his penis to, 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 to destroy the goodness of the women. He scattered them with his penis, sleeping with, uh, with uh, married women, sleeping with single. And those women, they started, you know, having, they started having each other. And at the end of the day, over 200, 200 women, wife of generals, generals in the army, wife of top, top bankers. They were using his, their money, their husband's money to sponsor him. Proprietors of schools, they, they, they left their brain at home and they, 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 they went to synagogue. And because, because they are in need, because they are in need, maybe in need of peace, maybe in need of joy, maybe in need of fruit of the womb, maybe in need of stability, just any need. They were vulnerable. And, and this guy, they, it just it destroyed their lives. Many of them, they went out of synagogue in shame. Their family must not hear what happened. So there's another boy. Wow. They call him Rock Boy. It's terrible. What they call him? Yes. Rock, Rock Boy. Rock Boy, because he worked together with the, the guy that did the rock. Uh, the rock by the altar. It was on one Saturday. This boy was on the rock, washing the rock, and the boy, the boy's leg slipped, and she he, he hit his head inside the pool. You know there is a pool there. That pool that people are going to get water. People have died there. People have died there. Blood. They have used. They have done blood sacrifice there. You are only going there to get initiated. You don't know the, 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 the beginning of anything. And then, so what are, are they getting water from that place? They are getting water from that place. I will, I will give you a video clip. How is leading people to go and get water from that place? How is asking them to be placing their hand on his own Bible? swearing allegiance to his demons. Okay, we have, to, anybody... we, have to, we have to do a program about that later on, okay. another time. But what happened to the okay, boy? Then, what happened to the boy? The boy died. The boy died. See, the, the altar... Okay, the fact that the boy dead. died, is that not just an accident? Well, because T.B. Joshua's hands are not clean, it, you know, it cannot come out as an accident. His hands are not clean. So they buried it, they, the guy, they, they, they buried the boy there? No, they didn't bury him there. They, they carried him to the medical department. But in the night, they took him out. Where they took him to, I don't know. I can only say the one I know. Those people that handled it, if God come into their hearts, they will come out someday to say what they know. But that particular boy, I don't know. The, the, there is another carpenter. Yeah. Of, you know, uh, God, God, God uh, exposes evil. There is another man, Ikare, is an Ikare carpenter. 
they went to Arigidi and Nikare to bring some workforce to come and work in the synagogue. So one day, it was service day. People always die during service day. It's a, yes, somebody must die. Either they are doing vigil or normal service, somebody must die. So it was in the morning on a Tuesday service. White people were coming in, going into the synagogue. In the presence of everyone, we don't know what the guy went to do because during service day, workers, builders don't work. But we don't know what this, maybe it's how they have programmed him. That is why we are saying that everybody must have their own altar and service their altar. If you don't have an altar, you will become a victim of another man's altar. Because what that man is offering on his altar, you don't know. But thank God, we have already have Christ that offered himself on our altar. You understand? So if you don't have Christ and you don't have the altar in your heart, the personal relationship person, with God. Yes, personal relationship with God. That person will become a victim of another man's altar. So what happened so, to this man? The man went into the roof, into the roof of the auditorium of synagogue. T.P. Joshua is hearing now. You cannot deny this because it happened openly. Suddenly, we just had a man fell from the roof. If you don't, if you know how high the roof of the synagogue is. The man fell from the roof down and hit his head on the on the on the hard surface. Where the pre congregation was sitting down. Yes. He fell right into the center of the church. That's right. In, into the center, dear say, into the center of the shrine, not the church. Yeah, yeah, the shrine. Yeah, into the center of the shrine. And people were sitting that right there. They were sitting down. Trust disciples. They have been trained. Oh, within split second, they rushed the man. And a lot of people came and said, ah, he's already, he's okay. He has, he's okay now. They brought another man to come and give testimony. Do you hear what I said? Wow. They brought another man in to come and give testimony that he's already, he just, you know, he, he just bruises, bruises. But that guy died. And they went to, they went to dump him somewhere on, uh, yeah, somewhere around Egbe. They dump him on the streets, under the bridge. It was later that the family came and they were looking for him. They said they didn't find, they didn't see him. They didn't find him. Are we talking about Ujin? Ujin, Ujin, I, I believe that soon Christine is coming on this program. Christine, uh, the wife of that footballer in Switzerland, they brought another friend. His name is Ujin. Eugene. From Eugene. Switzerland. Eugene, yeah. yeah Ujin. He had, he had HIV. He, uh, himself and, and Christine's sister, they were, uh, T.B. Joshua said he prayed for them and asked them not to be taking their drugs again. And unfortunately, he died and with uh, Christine's sister. Is he a white man? He's a white man. He's not the only white man that died. There are a lot of white people that died. There was one day, there was one day when I was, you know, the coordinator. I was working in the studio, coordinating and doing other assignments. I was at the back of the synagogue. I was washing my clothes. When around 
4 a.m. when one of the visitors came to, to meet me because they know that I don't sleep. I, I will be somewhere. He said he has been looking for me. I said, what happened? He said his roommate is not feeling fine. When I got there, the man was not, he was not uh, responding. So at that time, uh, TV Joshua has not built the auditorium. He was living downstairs. And the room he was sleeping was adjacent to the room that these people were sleeping. So I came out of the people's room. I went to TB Joshua's room to wake him that one of the visitors, because I have to report to him, one of the visitors is not, is not responding. He said I should go and call Benson and Agomo to pray for him. So these people, the two junior prophets, I call them, they pray, pray, pray like a prophet of Baal. Nothing happened. So all of us, we now went to meet uh, TB Joshua in the, uh, in the room. He didn't wake up. So he now said, okay, they should go back and be praying. That he was going to the, he was going to the mountain. That was, until I woke TB Joshua. He was sleeping with a dead man. What? He was... I said until I went to his room to wake him. He was, he was sleeping in a giant room to a, where a dead man was. Okay. God knows maybe it was his demon that went to kill the man. We don't know. But we just know that the man died. Is my audio okay? Beautiful. Are, are you very good? Very yes. Good. Okay. So he now he now went to the mountain. He said he's going to his marine mountain. So I thought maybe he wanted to go and bring something to wake the man. But by the time he came back, the man has already become stiff. You know, he has become stiff. So he said we should tell the visitors that he's not around. So that's why how they took the man to a co hospital and they took him home from there. So there's another man, a, a, a brother, a, a disciple. They call him Jacob. His name is Precious, so, but they gave him Jacob. So one day, Jacob said he wants to go home by force. And uh, at the end of the day, he left synagogue and went home. So where after was it? Like where was months, it? What state was it from? What area? It is uh, yeah, it's from Delta. It's from Delta. Okay. Delta. Go ahead. Yeah. So after like three months, after like three months, he came back. He said where he was working. He was a journalist. He said where he was working before he got trapped into the synagogue, they called him on the phone and they gave him 8 million naira, saying that they have been looking for him, you know, this is his uh, pension money. After he collected this money, instead of Jacob to run for his life, he came to the synagogue. He bought a car and came to the synagogue. He said he wants to come and pay tithe. Why he went to the to the cash office? TB Joshua met him by the stairs. I said, ah, what are you doing here? He said he came to pay tithe. Ah, TB Joshua said, really? Ah, come to my office, come to my office. So they talk. After talking, you will not believe that two weeks after, Jacob was shot dead. He was shot dead. There is another Igbo girl. She was working with furniture department. Her name is Ngozi. Definitely Ngozi. So she was working with uh, furniture department. One day, she went to the uh, to bathroom. She went to the bathroom to shower. That's why I'm saying that people should be careful. You don't know the time the demons of TB Joshua want to drink blood. 
Sometimes we will be we will be in the in the in in the room because we all at that time when you know we're there we live in, uh, in, in you know we live together. So, sometimes you will just see that a disciple run mad inside the room. The disciple will just run mad, so they have to put the disciple somewhere and lock lock them up for like a week or two weeks before they return to normalcy. So I'm talking about this evil girl, Ngozi. She went to the bathroom, you know, general bathroom. Suddenly she's, see, there is a pattern of death in the synagogue. People don't complain, hey, six, 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 so they will just die. They will just fall down. They will just slumped and died. No sickness, nothing. Ah, uh, so the guy just slumped and died. They thought maybe she fainted or so. They took her inside the medical department. The friend of the girl called the girl's father. Say, ah, something is wrong with Ngozi, you know. So the man was coming. Do you know that before the man got to the synagogue, when they realized that this girl was already dead, they went to drop her at a Jigo bus stop. Yes. In the synagogue, all the, all the vehicles have synagogue emblem. But there is one bus, is a white bus. They didn't put any emblem there. <coughs> Intentionally, they leave it that way because they want to be using it to do all this kind of errand. What about the plate in number? Plate number. Yeah. Yes. In case uh, they, they meet Waterloo outside and they start querying them, they don't want any, anyone to trace it to, to synagogue. So even if police arrest them, all of them, they will not say they are from synagogue. They will just lie on themselves. So they drop the girl at a Jibo bus stop. But when the father came, the father was arguing. They said, this girl died here. They said, no, they have not seen the girl. So they now call Agomo. It was Agomo. I know called. Agomo. I met Agomo and I spoke to him personally. He confirmed a lot of this, yes. Yes. So then they call Agomo. Then Agomo is an Igbo man. He spoke Igbo to the man. The man refused and said somebody has already told him that the, his daughter collapsed. Where is his daughter? While they were talking, somebody came from another place. You know, that's the way they normally arrange things in the synagogue. That's their psychology. Another person now came and said, ah, I saw somebody that looks like uh, one girl that is working <laughs> here somewhere. You be you be you, you it's 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 terrible, DSA. I saw somebody that looks at when I was coming at that bus stop. Then I just saw I said, ah, am I looking? Is this not uh Ungazi? What did happen now? So all of them now say, let's go and see, let's go and see with the father. The father still insisted that say no. They now called the girl who informed the father, the girl, because she doesn't want trouble. He said, no, I didn't call you. I didn't call you. So, the Agoma, you know, Agoma, all of us, we were all wicked when we were there. Agoma was wicked. So, Agoma, you know, T.B. Joshua has already told Agoma what to do. They now shouted on the man and told the man that, is it not you that you are sleeping with your daughter? And because you are sleeping with your daughter, that's why T.B. Joshua asked her to be living in the synagogue. Now, has he done any wrong for him to help your daughter? They now called all their kinsmen, all Igbo people, association in the synagogue, and they started abusing the man. And because the man is a poor man, they, they now suggested to him that instead of you to beg, you know, quote, man of God, to give you money to go and bury your daughter, you are now fighting. As a poor man, what can he do? He now said, okay. So he gave them money. 
to go and bury the girl. But whatever he has done with the girl, he has done it. I, I uh, spoke with, I, I personally spoke with Agomo. Agomo was one of the disciples, right? I think it was, yes. it was one of the first uh, junior prophets, or what do you call them? Disciples. Uh, it, was, it was the second. It was the second. The second. Taye prophet. Yeah, Taye prophet was the first. Okay, and he was the second uh, yeah. junior prophet. So, and I met him, I spoke to him, he confirmed all this. Ooh. I think we lost him. So, I think we have a caller, right? Somebody wanted to call. So let's see. Let's see if we could get the caller. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we are going to get uh, uh, Mrs. Johnson back. Uh, but before then, I want to say that that second in command to, to TB Joshua, I met with him personally. I sat down with him for three hours hearing all these stories. How they would take dead people and dump them somewhere and take them to the mountain and all kind of atrocities that your your ear will be gray if you are not careful by the time you hear all these things. What this lady is talking is not even half of the story. Hello? Hello, we have a caller? Okay, Norman Mesbuk, Atam. Okay, we are going to straight try to see if okay, hello, do we have a caller? Hello. Hello. Now you must not bring it. Yeah. Good evening, DSA. Hello. I don't see that. Good evening, DSA. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Yes. Good evening, sir. Can you speak louder into the device so that we could hear you better? Hello. Good evening, DSA. Yes, sir. Who is speaking from where, sir? Okay. I'm speaking louder now. Good evening, everyone. Yes. I'm, calling, I'm speaking from Italy. I'm Tony by name. Okay, sir. Um, I've been following your program. I thank um, you. I thank you for the show. And I also thank the evangelist there. I, I think I wrote that book too. Um, the, the, some people are criticizing the evangelist. I think those people that are studying the evangelist, those people must be under spell too. They must be under spell too. Because, uh, what she, everything she's saying is the fact because my own cousin was there. Your cousin? Yes, because my own cousin was in that church. That man has so much money. The man died. The man died mysteriously because when I went to Nigeria last year, I was in his house. The type of story the man told me, uh, I was even afraid. Wow. The question I asked him because he was telling me. When Ray would not be falling outside, Ray would be beating him. Ray would be beating him in his house. Wow. So straight, we carried him, knock him on the ground. He went to India for treatment. So we even went to go and serve grandfather. And eventually he died. The question I asked him, I went there when, when, he, when he was sick last year. I asked him, you will you always go to TB Joshua, go there to sleep. If you enter his, his, his mansion, everywhere, TB Joshua, I asked him one, they say, all this. TB Joshua picture you are putting inside toilet, inside kitchen, inside the bathroom, everywhere in your house. This TB Joshua, you are sick. He didn't help you. The type of story that that man told me before he died, I, I believe everything that evangelist is saying. Because the wife, the wife also died. The wife first of all died. After six months or seven months, then the man died. Mysteriously. And the two of them were going to TB Joshua. First of all, heard you about your program. Uh, of course, in fact, it was because of TV news for that man had to go and build a house in Lake Adagri. Why his home is in worry? It was uh, terrible. God will help us in that uh, in that country. So many people like TV. It's not only TV news. You have so many there. So many homes have been broken by all these so-called men of God. So many people. So husband and wife perished it's like a very that. Terrible team. I'm very very happy. Wife perished like that. Yes, yes. I'm talking about my own cousin. Yes. Um, what this evangelist is saying is an eye opener for everybody to learn, to learn and beware. 
that is what I have to contribute on the show. Thank you very much. Thank you, I, sir. I'm still following the show. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank Ooh. you so much. The way you it's a pleasure. Oh my God. This was just last year. And since he went to Nigeria, we didn't, they have lost the husband and the wife who are deadly rich. Moved from Delta to Badag to Badagro where some closer to TB Joshua and built a ma mansion there. She also be closer to TB Joshua. Until they wrecked him and his family and his wife's lives. And some people will be coming to criticize this woman. What kind of deception would that have been? And I show, can you show the photograph that I sent to you today? There is another woman. And she said I shouldn't mention her name because she's scared, I guess. She said I should, you know, she sent me the picture of her father who died in the <laughs> Joshua uh, shrine. And what she said is that this man was a good, the best father possible. Educated man, accountant. But because when people begin to have challenges in life with their business and things like that, they want miracles. This desire for miracle in Nigeria is the problem. This is the man. Went to TB Joshua's place and that's way they it just they just ruined the man. The man just lost his life like that. People are getting in touch with information like this. Another lady from the US, and this lady from the US says that she knows you, Mrs. Johnson, and that you know the story yes. of her sister. And her sister, even her mother later on died because of TB Joshua. Yes. Yes. Another one from the U from the US, after one of our programs, got in touch with me. And said that Otibi Joshua went and breathed on the woman and said, You are pregnant. And the stomach get, started getting swelling and swollen and said she, she is pregnant. Even though she's married to a white British woman, I mean, British man. But because of, uh, you know, the man is not even asking for children, but she wanted to have children by force. The man blew on him and said, You are pregnant. His stomach started growing. They went to the hospital. They said, You are not pregnant. They said, You have fibroid. And she said, no, it's not fibroid because my t prophet, T.B. Joshua, said it is, it is a child that is going there. And the yes, yeah. carried, she carried that pregnancy for five years. And then, and then. Okay, I, okay. Go ahead. She carried the pregnancy for five years. So the man, the man, you know, pitied the wife and said, let us go to the hospital and check what is going on in your stomach you know you know people who are who are member of the synagogue because they have been they have been brainwashed gassed, brainwashed they are you know they 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 don't give up on time that is why you see a lot of people making different comments we pity you you are in our prayers we have nothing against you so at the end of the day, she went to the hospital and it was large fibroid they brought out. So she surrendered herself to be cleansed. So afterwards, she, she stopped going to the synagogue. She borrowed herself brain from her husband and stopped going to the synagogue because she usually give a lot of money to the synagogue. T.B. Joshua sent a misery to go and meet her and beg her that whatever the reason, it will, it will, it will solve. The woman said no. They, they were living in a koi. Even Erelu Fernandez, Erelu Fernandez, T.B. Joshua has sent me to his, to her house in a koi. So when the emissary said the woman refused. T.B. Joshua himself took himself and went to visit the woman. And after they have talked, the woman said no, she was not going back to the synagogue. And uh, two, weeks, two weeks afterwards, the woman started behaving as if she was having mental problems. 
I believe TB Joshua left some, some mark of Satan in her house. That was how the woman died. This woman is on is on, is my friend on Facebook. The sister is my friend on Facebook. She, she told me she was crying. She said TB Joshua killed the breadwinner of their family. The head of their family that TB Joshua killed her. They are still suffering their pain in silence. So there are a lot of people. What, even the one that happened recently, DSA. Nobody, there's nobody that will say they don't know Ola Ito in the synagogue. Ola Ito is well known. When, we, when you talk about uh, uh, emergency department, she's the terror in emergency department. Also in testimony department and in, uh, in uh, what do you call it? In uh, prophecy department. But what happened? This Olaito is dead today because she left synagogue. She's dead today because she left synagogue. So people are always afraid to leave. They are always afraid to leave synagogue because they are afraid that something terrible will happen to them. Are we talking about Iya Estate? There's one woman they call Iya Estate. She was one of the old women in the synagogue. Later, she, 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 she was the, the woman in charge of the nursing mother. Anytime in the in the synagogue video, you see that baby comes out. These are the people that usually organize it. They normally give due women who are ready to deliver. They give them uh, castor oil to drink so that the baby in their womb can turn. And then we arrange them where TB Joshua is stretching his hand. So... If the baby is coming, they will now say, ah, it's the hand of TB Joshua that brings the baby out. <laughs> Whereas it's the castor oil they have given the woman to drink that pump the baby out. So this woman, they, we call her Ya Estate. She has been in synagogue for a long time. It happened that Ya Estate's uh, daughter, first daughter, got married and because she has no family that much she's always in the synagogue sleeping in the synagogue or coming to the synagogue around 7 a.m and stay till around 10 p.m so it's like synagogue uh, members are a family so when the first daughter was getting married she told some of the people that she has, uh, she has been with that my daughter is getting married. So on that day, she told uh, T.B. Joshua that the, uh, the daughter is getting married. T.B. Joshua said he forgot. So it was that day that T.B. Joshua sent Abeni and Mama Michael to the woman's house. And while they got there, they saw a lot of synagogue members, the rich people who went there to support the woman. Because many of them, their wife have passed through a department as uh, the nursing mother coordinator. So they went there to support. So when Abeni, uh, a lady called Abeni, and another woman called Mama Michael got back to the synagogue, they told Fatai that all members of the synagogue went to Mama Estate's daughter's wedding. So, is there anything wrong with that? No. That, that was Saturday. On Sunday morning, the second day of the of the mother's bride, the, the mother's bride's day, she also came to work in the synagogue on Sunday. And a meeting, that's how they normally, you know, intimidate people. A meeting was called early in the morning 
and Mama Estate was uh, Mama Estate was standing in the midst of the of the of the group, and everybody. T.P. Joshua has already coached us that when she come, you should you should talk you should talk roughly to her that you want to you want to collect all the members of synagogue from T.B. Joshua. That what gives you audacity to invite his members, to invite his customers to your house. A bride woman, a, 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 a bride's mother, that's supposed to full of joy. She was crying the second day the, the, the daughter got married. And that was what took her out of the synagogue. She just made up her mind that what the heck. She has spent almost 20 years in the synagogue. And just for you to allow her to, to, to have a daughter's marriage in peace, do you know that in not too long, the woman died? She's dead today. There is one man they call Chief Akali. He's a politician in this country. You know, in the 90s, he's, he's a, he, he was a politician. They were the ones sponsoring Fatai in those days. When the man became sick, he had stroke. Do you know that instead of instead of him, instead of TB Joshua to allow the man to go as executive, because he's one, he was one of the people that sponsor uh, give synagogue money. TB Joshua told uh, the online talk that I mentioned that tell him to go outside the gate with his family. Anytime you see uh, TB Joshua passing. You will be begging, please help us, help us, help us, because they want to camera him, because they want to put him on 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 program, which me I usually coordinate in the studio, so that they can show it on TV that a politician of that you know of, of that level, yeah, yeah, yeah be begging for healing in the synagogue. They were in the synagogue and he couldn't even heal the man. The man died. And after the man died, the man has three brilliant sons. So T.P. Joshua asked them to come to the synagogue. He was using one as voiceover artist because he has baritone voice. He's the one that usually do voiceover for Gouda. If you know Gouda, yes. you know somebody. Eh? The beer company, yes. Yes. He normally do, he do a uh, voiceover for Gouda when they are doing Gouda Ultimate. He, he, yeah, and also for Glow. He has baritone voice. Uh, T.B. Joshua said they should be coming to work for him. Later, the mother understand what was going on. He took her son, her, her children, her three sons, and they ran away. So one day, Sonny called me, one of those sons, and say, I have left synagogue and they are still using my voice on their on their uh, Emmanuel TV. I said, go and get a lawyer. Let a lawyer write them and tell them, warn them that anytime they use your voice, you will sue them to court. But maybe he, he did that. I don't know. You know, I don't know. There's one girl, they call her Anna. She's she's a white lady from England. She was a disciple in the in the synagogue. She was a disciple in the synagogue. So one time she said she wanted to get married. And just like all the girls who are there, that they have been there like 25 years, no husband. If I choose not to marry, it's my choice, isn't it, DSA? Yeah. But for you to tell me that I should not get married, that is ungodly, is unacceptable. So all those girls, it's, it's, it, it's a law for them. They must not get married. Some of them, their womb has been removed because of incessant abortion for TB Joshua. is the one having sex with them. All those girls that you have seen on the, on, the, on the altar singing, they are not singing to God, though. They are not singing to God, though. They are only singing to TB Joshua. Is their God there? Is the one having sex with them? 
There's one slim girl, dark like this. I know she has no womb again. There's another girl called Bosse. She has no womb again. Abortion, abortion, abortion. The other girl, Anne, she too, no womb again. They got there in their teenager. They have become old mamas there. What no about husband, the no. English girl we are talking about? Anna, so when the trouble comes, I want to get married. No, 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 no. She left. She got upset well, and left. Was she also living with, sleeping with T.B. Joshua or what? Yes, now. All the girls there, you can't escape it. Wow. You can't escape it. So she left. She said she wants to get married to another brother called Dave, Dave Tong. So when T.B. Uh, Joshua said no, that was how, you know, the, the lady just left. And do you know that within some months, they rushed the girl back with breast cancer? English girl. English girl. And she was arranged at the emergency. Uh, T.B. Joshua lays his hand on her to finally finish her. She went home to die. There's one, there's one boy, they call him Samuel Agui. He's now in Ghana now. He's not, he has become a prophet. One day I called Samuel. I said, did God call you? Because we have to be very careful. He said, yeah, God called him. That was when he, he remembered that do I, he was asking me if I remember one lady called Nana. She's a Ghanaian. I said, yes, I remember, I remember. Anytime T.B. Joshua goes to Ghana, they were the one that usually do his PA. I said, I remember. Abby said Nana called her. Called him. Ah, I said, T.B. Joshua. That both of them should go to Ghana TV to go and refute what I have said. I said, you are free to go oh, anywhere. to go and refute your own testimony. Yes. So they, they want to gather together. They said to go and refute. The boy told me, he said, I cannot follow her because I know what you have said is true. I have the audio clips. I can send it to you. But he said, I know that what you have said is true. What? Even is even more than what you are saying. Yeah. What? Because this boy was living in TB Joshua's apartment. He was living. No, 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 they are okay. one of those boys. He was living where? where? Girls Go ahead. Can you say that again? The boys having sex with girls in the night. They are the one. They are. They are the. They are the uh, errand it's, boys. Uh, errand boys. It's uh, room boys that normally clean. They normally carry his pants that has been stained blood. That's been Sorry. Yeah, I said the boy was living inside TV Joshua's apartment. Can you hear me? So, and the boy now is a prophet in Ghana. He's a prophet in Ghana. What was his name? His name is Samuel Agui. Is he a Ghanaian or a Nigerian? He's a Nigerian, but he, he just went there. You know, there are lots of them who are, you know, scattered like that. I don't know what they took out of uh, what they saw, what they see, but I always ask them, did God call you? So he told Nana that he know what is going on inside Fatai's bedroom, that they are the ones that usually wash his boxers, that are stained with girls' blood and, you know, and spams. So there's another man, they call him Mr. Okoje. Mr. Okoje is a, was a policeman. 
Can you hear me, sir? Very well, very well now. Yeah. Mr. Okoje was a policeman. He's still in the synagogue now. But they, they, they sent him out of service because he was, uh, he was caught manipulate, manipulating. He was caught stealing. Let's call it a spade. He was caught stealing. In the, so um, in the, in the Nigerian police. In the Nigerian police. Because he was about to be dismissed. So he ran to the synagogue. So at the end of the day, T.B. Joshua could not do anything for him. So he was dismissed eventually. So he now became a synagogue security man. So anytime, you know, T.B. Joshua wants to see uh, 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 synagogue members, family, the man will say the wife do not believe in synagogue. So one day, T.B. Joshua told Mr. Okoje, Mr. Okoje, you are hearing this, oh, and you know this is true. T.B. Joshua asked him to go and buy a Bible and handkerchief. So after, after he, he collected the Bible and the handkerchief from him, after some days, he returned it to him and said, when you are praying, put your wife's picture inside this Bible and use the handkerchief to wipe the, the, the picture. In no time, the wife died. Just because the wife the would not wife, follow him to church. Yes, and he believed. He believed that one someday, the wife may change the man's mind. So he killed the, the even the man also used the, his mouth to say it. But the man thought it was a good development. Do you know why? When the man was mourning his wife, he didn't he didn't report to work. So TB Joshua asked them to go and call Mr. Okoje. They said, ah, he's at home mourning his wife. He called him and said he should come. So when the man came, T.B. Joshua told the man that uh, don't, 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 don't cry for too long. The wife wanted to kill you. That's why, you know, I help you to act fast. <laughs> there is a woman, there is a woman called Elizabeth Yaba. She's in America now. She has a sister called Teresa Yaba. In the synagogue, that is why many people are bearing Teresa. Teresa is not my name. Oh. It's just because it's in my document. That's why I'm just leaving it. I've already even changed it in Nigeria. I've removed it. You understand? But when Teresa visited synagogue, you know, T.B. Joshua is on, on Leonard. He has not heard about uh, a name called Teresa before. So he just kept quiet. After the lady had left, she came to the synagogue because she had HIV. So after the lady had left, T.B. Joshua called me. He called Bolaji. He called the twins. And even his wife, Evelyn, he said, God said he wants to give uh, some special people, special name. That's how we became Teresa. All of you. All of us. One name. I said before, before, we, uh, before, before, we usually, we must be a Joshua. Teresa Joshua, Teresa Joshua, this Joshua, this Joshua. We change our father's name. So... The Elizabeth Yaba, she came because she was a journalist. I believe she's still a journalist now. So she said she saw synagogue video. So she came on a facts finding mission. She stayed in the synagogue for two weeks. She was working together with me because me, as the head of the studio, as the chief editor, video editor, and as the, the voiceover artist, either video, audio, TV stations, jingles, I do the voiceover. 
So she was working together with me. She want me to cut some clips for her so that she can go to her country to play it in America. So anytime she want to eat, she want to have her food they, because we don't eat in the studio. It's a law because of the equipment so that food will not drop into it. So she will be called to go to her room. Then after she has stayed two weeks, there were times T.B. Joshua would take her to Marine Mountain every morning. Both of them would go to Marine Mountain. So while they were there, I don't know what they were doing. So after two weeks, she left. The next thing we hear was that the sister Teresa was calling into the synagogue that her sister has gone berserk. She has gone, she has mental problems. I was shocked. I anytime I report the the call to uh, T B Joshua that somebody named at that time we have not known Teresa that somebody named Teresa said she's Elizabeth Yaba's sister and Elizabeth is behaving you know uh, she's having mental problem. T B Joshua said I should stop picking their calls. Hmm. After some time. Teresa came to synagogue because she wanted to report her sister's case and also because of her own uh, health issue. So they put her in emergency and she left. I don't know what they discussed with uh, T.B. Joshua. So do you know for a long time she continued calling her, eh, the sister has not gotten well, has not gotten well. And she too, she has been taking off drugs that she should stop taking, you can imagine somebody living in America. America will take care of their own. And she was having Health what? Wise. What was she having? And she was having HIV. Okay. Yeah. So, then So, T.B. Joshua told her not to use her drugs anymore. Yes, that is what they normally tell people. Don't use drugs, you are being healed. Because he wants to shine. And he, 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 those people have not received healing. People are just dying en masse. In Nigeria today, if you, if you go on radio and ask and announce that anybody who has been like Alex now, the, the, he, you know, it happened to his uh, relation. If you go on radio in Nigeria and announce that anybody who has, who has, uh, who's, a member of their family has died through going to the synagogue. You will see how many people that will come out. So when Teresa went back, she refused to use her drugs and she died. Later in years, on my Facebook, I saw Elizabeth. So I said, ah, Elizabeth, I tried calling her before, before we, later we got, you know, we got uh, connected. So she told me, I asked her, what about Teresa? She said Teresa is dead. That Teresa will always hold onto T.B. Joshua's picture and will be crying, Papa, Papa. She refused to drink, take drugs. She refused to go to the hospital and it was too late for her. She died. I said, what about you? We heard about your issue. He said, ah, she's getting well now. That she thanked God that they pray for her, they took her to the church, Bible-believing church, and they minister healing to her. I said, what happened? How, how come? I was with you. Wait, what, what happened? Nigerian English. What happened? What happened? She said, she told me categorically that she knew what happened to her came from the synagogue. I ask her because I, I just want to be sure. I know what I know, but I also want to ask her what happened. Why, why, she should, why should she say what happened to her came from the synagogue? She said one day, why they invited her to come and have her lunch. The food they gave her was placed on a white handkerchief. There's, there was no plates. There was no plates. The food was placed on white handkerchief. 
So she talks within herself that, ah, is this how they welcome visitors? Is this how they entertain visitors? I mean, why should food be on white handkerchief? It's, it's, she said it was jollof rice, mixed rice. So, well, she said she ended up eating the food. She said immediately after she finished eating the food, she was hearing voices in her ears. And by the time she returned home, that voices, me and this lady, we spoke for like, I think I've sent you a clip. Yeah. She, we spoke for a long time. She was asking me, Bisola, how could I have gone mad? That she was a mentor to many people. She was the first person that left Africa to United States. And she brought her two siblings. How could she have gone mad? I said, I don't know. And she said for 10 years of her life, she was speaking trash, speaking feces on the streets of U.S. The, the, the welfare system took her children from her because she was not sound mentally. Say they gave her drugs, they gave her different things. So I remember one day, you know, there was, you know, when I was there, there are some selected girls. There are some selected girls that TB Joshua will invite in the night to rub dusting powder on his body. He said, come and pet me. He's a liar. You want to use that to have sex with that person. So you put dusting powder all over his body and be massaging. He will be naked. So that day I was there. I was doing the dusting powder. And there was one little girl, she was with us. That show just why newly why came home. Why did you say little? She was little because she was like maybe 12 or 13 years. Ooh. So why, we, you know, she was rubbing his leg. I was rubbing his chest and his arm. Then I see, I see that he will, he will take Sheung's hand and use it under his uh, groans. Or what do you call, you know, yeah, men's yeah, private? Yeah. So Cheryl would do like this, you know, like a baby. Oh, no, sir, no, sir, no, sir. After, after a while, he will leave her. Later, he will now take the hand again and be using it to rub uh, his private part. The girl, you know, shyly, they say, no, 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 sir, no, sir. Then after some time, I was discharged. They said, uh, T.B. Joshua said I should go back to the studio. T.B. Joshua, you are hearing me now. This is what happened. You know, you cannot, remember, you cannot forget. I can give, I can, if they take us to court of law, I will give them your vivid, your vivid size, size. Every man has their size. I can never be wrong. So, I was asked to leave the, 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 the room and go back to the studio. So when I got to the studio, only Sheung was there. The little girl was there. Every night, he would be calling Sheung, 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 until the girl became, you know, became bold. And, you know, you, you know that she has been initiated into this kind of, you know, circle. <sighs> and at the end of the day, the girl was disbarging. The girl had a lot of uh, abortions, you know. You know. So even there's one guy, they call him Taye. Taye. They call him Taye Camera. Yes. Taye Camera. Taye Camera. Uh, somebody dreamt and told Taye Camera that they saw Taye Camera at Mountain. That's uh, Marine Mountain. And they saw him eaten by a crocodile. They saw him eaten by a crocodile. And well, both of them, they kept the dream between themselves. 
But in no long time, when Taye started getting sick, that was when the other boy opened up that this is the dream he had. And Taye was sick, 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 sick. They said he has kidney problem. They took him to the hospital. In the hospital, in uh, Lut, Taye got 80 pints of blood. I've never seen that case before. And it was T.B. Joshua who is paying. So the people who are taking, uh, who are carrying themselves to the synagogue for healing, T.B. Joshua used drugo. They go to the hospital. His wife just had a thyroid operation. And some people will be taking their thyroid problem to healing line. So why should he send his wife for operation? Because he wants to save her life. So this tire was in the hospital. Later, when the, uh, he continued to be sick, it was Ia Junior. Ia Junior. The Ia Junior is late now because she knows a lot of things. In 2008, when we first shouted, we asked Ia Junior to come out, to come and give a confession. Ia Junior was saying that uh, later, 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 until she died, she was, she had, they said she had, Fatai called her, and she started vomiting blood. The only son she had, Junior, also died in the same way. What about this so guy? Yes. So death followed the, 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 the ministry of T.B. Joshua because he was using all those death for sacrifices and for rituals. So this tire, after they carried him out of loot, it was Ia Junior who took him to uh, uh, Alagbo, I don't know, uh, all these herbalists. Because uh, when orthodox uh, medicine didn't work, with the with in conjunction with TB Joshua, they took him to an orthodox abalist. <laughs> and so, people are going to TB Joshua for healing, and he's sending people to abalist. Joshua is going to abalist. So after after a while, I recovered, and. Uh, he just recovered. We always call him a man with nine lives, not knowing that they were still targeting him. In the collapse of synagogue, he was among. And he died. So that he died. Because, you know, uh, as Fatai usually used people's pictures, you know, to do a uh, lot of jazz. Sir, a lot of witchcraft, uh, yeah? For witchcraft. See, that is why I'm saying that I am indicting all pastors in Nigeria. Because why should they allow this monster to continue this far uncheckmated? Was Jeremiah quiet? Um, some of them say, you know, some people have already called me. They say, you know, uh, don't talk about, you know. Jeremiah in the Bible was not quiet. Was he quiet over the false prophets and all those prophets giving fake, uh, fake prophecy? Jeremiah was not quiet. Isaiah was not quiet. Ezekiel was not quiet. We can continue naming them. Zechariah was not quiet. So maybe you will challenge me that those are Old Testament. Okay. Was Apostle Paul quiet over Peter? No. Apostle Paul was not quiet. Jude was not quiet. James was not quiet. The Bible says, Woe unto he who is at ease in Zion. I have a book that is coming out. I'm going to release it this month. Just to support your point, it's going to be called the, the Plague of Silence. 
I have a series of ah. video series on that uh, on YouTube, Plague of Silence, the Plague of Silence series, many teachings there. But I have a book coming out. I will release that book before February because uh, it is important for people to really know what is happening and that this Plague of Silence is one of the things that is destroying our country. All these things are happening in many churches, not just in TB Joshua. Almost all no churches. Only in there yet. That is what, that's the point I want to get to now. That see, all these pastors, they don't want their members to know the truth. Though. They want to keep them in dark. See, just last week here, when this uh, crossover, crossover night thing came, which we have never seen, it's our list is occultic people that do cross overnight. So in, in my own updates, Jaja, I was just writing. All my friends can bear me witness. I said, God, do not wait until cross overnight before he blesses you. Right. I put it. So in the afternoon, there's one man, they call him Amsler, Amsler Madubuko. He's a pastor in Nigeria. Oh, I know I him very know well. Him. He's been, I've hosted him here before in my church. Let me, let me tell you about him. He's not, he, he, well, his, his attitude is wrong. I had to take the microphone it's, from him when he was here in my church. <laughs> right on the, right on me, the stage. Let, let, me, let me enlighten people, dear say. He was, he was the one who asked me for friendship on Facebook. And I consulted some, some, some of my friends and brothers. They said, okay, uh, uh, accept his request. Okay, because he's my friend at that time, whatever is updates usually come on my trends. So I saw that he was advertising crossover. What did I do? I went to copy my updates that day that God does not wait on, uh, until crossover and I comment on his advertisement. Do you know that this man called Anslem, he deleted my comment because he does not want his members to know the truth. He doesn't want to reason because some of them they will see it and say, ah, it is true. He doesn't want them to, to, to see the light. As Jesus came for us to know the truth and to see the light, he wants to keep his, 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 his members uh, under, under, under darkness because he, he, he must collect the last offering of 2018. DSA, DSA, do you know that in Nigeria, pastors have brainwashed their members that all the money you have in the night of uh, 2018 whatever that is ending, you must bring it to church so that you can spend new money in the, in the, in the new year. So and if you have 100,000 at home, you take it there because it's, it, it, all things pass away. All things become new. <laughs> this is what they do. <laughs> Some people call it <laughs> Omega offering. And then in January, they will do Alpha offering. Yes. This is what they do in the churches. So they keep them under darkness. So when this man deleted my comments, I went to the messenger to, to confront him. We, we fear nobody. The, Jesus said, the people of the world lord over them, but it must not be so among you because you are brethren. We talk, we should reason, you know, with ourselves now. So I want to challenge him that why do you delete my comment? You don't want your, your member to see. He said, me, I'm sick. I need deliverance. And he, and he just deleted me. I told him, I said, but I'm not the one that asked you for friendship. He quickly deleted me. So that's what I'm saying, that the pastors in Nigeria, they don't want their members. They don't want their members to know the truth. And the, the time has come, sir, for everyone 
to wake up from slumber. The Bible says the night has been has, has been long spent. The, the morning has the day has come. So people should wake up from their slumber. I don't know, you know, why anybody would want to remain under manipulation. The Bible says salvation is individual race. Yeah, so that's why the they, GO, that's why they are discrediting you, uh, me, you assassinate my character, your character, so that people will refuse to believe. But you see, I tell them, ah. okay, let's even say I'm bad. Assassinate my character as much as you want. But let's come, come and discuss what I'm talking about, the truth I'm bringing. This truth I'm talking about, is it true or not? Forget about me. Even if it is animal that is talking to you. But if it's true, if he's telling the truth, you ha cannot do anything against the truth, only for the truth. Only for the truth. Yes. And I love what you said to Paul Akinpedumi when he was asking you that don't you protect your protect your your name uh, integrity your name. integrity yeah integrity thank you you say if you are in Christ you don't have integrity yep I don't care for integrity you are supposed to be dead to integrity yes you're supposed to be dead because if you are trying to protect name protect this you'll be covering a lot of evil yeah you'll become like them you become like them. That's why I told my but people. You, yeah, go ahead. Yes. If, if you are covering integrity, you'll be lying. you even be lying yeah. to protect your integrity. Right. That is what, what, what is happening in the synagogue. You can imagine when house collapsed. Not only one nation was in, in mourning. Not only one nation. Many nations, because their citizens died. TB Joshua started protecting his integrity. He now called journalists. He shared 50, 50,000 to them and was telling them what to write. We thank God for one Nicholas who carried uh, his recorder and recorded his voice. Wow. <laughs> and yes, he recorded his voice and also rejected the money. The man said, how, how, how could you do this? The following Sunday, you see TB Joshua in pancake as if he's a woman like me. He rubbed pancake on his face because before he goes to the service, we are the one that normally rub pancake on his face. If you know his makeup kits, his makeup kit is as big as this. What is pancake? Ah, yes, ah powder, exactly. powder, powder. Oh, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, he rubbed pancake and start lying. It's not even remorse. See, the Bible says their conscience has been seared with hot iron. They, they have no soul. They have no conscience. So if our pastors, if they have conscience, if they have soul, I think they should continue hammering on this guy. If they continue hammering, the government also will come into it and say, ah, what is it about this guy that you people are talking about? But when everybody is just quiet, if your father asks, is, a, is a business owner, and they have uh, workers. Will you open your eyes down that your the workers will spoil your father's business? And you know that this is the business your father will leave because a righteous man leaves inheritance for his children's children. This is the business your father will leave for you. So if you now leave it, that means you don't care. Jesus said the seal of his father's house has consumed him. But the zeal of the of, of, of the things of God has not consumed this these pastors because they are they are they are they are living in in the in in their in their ivory tower. They are having private jets. And Jesus said, You think you are poor, you think you are rich, you are wretched. If you know 
or how you are in the spirit. Wow. Well, uh, Evangelist Johnson, you have really spilled the beans here. I want to tell people that we have your book here. The book of Evangelist uh, Johnson is here. It's called The TB Joshua I Know, Deception uh, of the Age Unmasked. The de Deception of the Age Unmasked. So, and uh, The TB Joshua I Know. You can buy this book on my blog, sundadelajablog.com slash books. And you can buy it on Amazon as well. So Amazon or sonadlajabooks.com slash books. Uh, and, um, and also, you know, you have my books as well. You can get all my books on sonadlajablog.com I mean, slash books. And if you have not yet registered to come for the next month history makers trading in Ukraine, it's next month. It's from the 2nd to the 7th of February. Uh, you can go to my blog, sonadlajablog.com slash HMT, sonadelajablog.com slash HMT, or you could just write to HMT at godembassy.org. Uh, if you want to read my books, other books, you can read them all for free by going to uh, Kindle Unlimited. And uh, for those of you who want to join the mentorship program, uh, it's also for free. Go to the same blog, sonadelajablog.com slash, slash mentorship. And if you want to go with us to Nigeria, we are planning to move to Nigeria and build a better country. Go to sundadilajablog.com slash Nigeria. <laughs> slash Nigeria. Yes, so um, <laughs> we have overspent our time. We have actually, we are actually like 40 minutes over the board. And we are going to come back <laughs> next month with uh, Evangelist Johnson to talk on one, one of these top topics. Maybe this, with the way and this, uh, the way TB Joshua initiates people into his coven. Uh, maybe that's what we are going to talk about. Or we are going to talk about how T.B. Joshua was able to, you know, to, to hypnotize great men of God to come over to, 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 to synagogue. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of things to talk about. If you read this book uh, by Evangelist wow. Johnson, you will, just be, you will just see the reality of evil in this world. So before we go, what is it you would like to say? We want to give you the last word, Evangelist uh, Johnson. What would you like to say before you go, we go today? Dear say, what I will say is what I've been saying. The Bible says in Matthew 7, 13 to 14, that the road to eternal life is narrow. Only few find it. Please, everybody listening to us, be among the few. And the road to eternal damnation is, is wide. Multitude go into it. If you, if you go where they are telling people the true gospel, you will see that only few are there. People want fast miracle. People want, uh, yeah, what do you call it? Microwave miracle. All these things that they are giving you is an element to initiate you into the dark world. Go and know your God. Jesus Christ has died. What do you want the Son of God to do again? He loves us. Go to him. At least you don't know all these people from Adam. It's only when you see them on TV and on radio that you got to know. Why, why are you speaking for them? Why, everybody for himself. Why are you speaking for them? I said, I lived there. Not, I was not going and coming. I lived there. For how many for years? 14 years of my life. 14 years. 14 years of my life. So I ate with him. It's like dining with the devil. So I, I, I'm, I'm just appealing to people. Is what we are saying is not about TB Joshua. If he has chosen his path, well, I'm sorry about that. That is his choice. But I'm just telling people, please go and know your God. Develop personal relationship with him. God is a good God. He's not angry with you. He loves you. Just return to him. That's what he said. If you return to me, I'll return to you. He loves us dearly. So it's not about TB Joshua. 
It's about people of God. I fell somewhere and God rescued me. So I'm standing by that gutter as a torch bearer telling you there is a gutter there. That is all I'm doing. There is a, there is a gutter there. That's what I'm doing. I don't mind, I will continue standing there. If that this is all I came on this world to do, if this is why God made me to experience what I experienced, I will continue to point the torchlight and say there is God out there. I'm not your enemy. If you take me as your enemy, I'm very sorry about that. So I'm, I'm, I'm just... So God bless you. May this 2019 be a year of glory for all of us in Jesus' name. Well, May for those, the will of God be done in our lives. Thank you so very much, Evangelist. Uh, to contact us. For those who want to get in touch with Evangelist uh, Johnson, you see her contact there on the screen. You can get in touch with her by Facebook and uh, inbox her. Or you could write to her on um, uh, on her email or WhatsApp. And um, yeah, she, you know, she is a great voice of deliverance for the Nigerian church. And not just, this is not just about TV Joshua, this is about majority of Nigerian churches practice this kind of, not majority, but not, I would say a lot of these, a lot of churches these days, those popular churches are practicing some of these things here. And we need to really be watchful and be careful not to fall into the hands of evil like this particular church. And um, yeah, but I hope that this has opened the eyes of a lot of people today. And uh, thank you so much, Evangelist, for coming. We'll see you next time. And thank you so much, everyone, for coming as well. Nice to be with you. I will be coming back in the next 15 minutes to talk about knowing God through the Holy Spirit. You have a personal relationship with God, how to know God through the Holy Spirit. So see you guys. Peace. Salut.